Hello traders and welcome to this afternoon webinar. I hope everyone has a great time so far. My name is Theo for those who see me for the first time. I'm just here to introduce you to your host for today, Paul, and pass it on to him. Uh, we are expecting Paul in a minute or so to join us. In the meantime, I would like to make sure that everyone is or everyone has registered for the market talks the market talks event with uh, Richard Friesen I will host the interview on April 27 15 days from now so I'll share the link with you and please please make sure that you register yourself because it's going to be one event only it's not um, going to be a uh continuation of this event with this particular gentleman and i believe it's really really helpful for you guys so please make sure you register paul hello it's a pleasure to have you here <laughs> good to see you hope you're well how are you today good and by the same year as always there <laughs> likewise likewise so exciting things i believe with the markets now, with the US dollar, with the forms tonight, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's already, uh, it's already had a, an interesting start this afternoon, the US session with the CPI yeah. numbers. So, uh, yeah, I think we're in for an interesting week. Also, uh, just give me a moment to make sure you can share your screen. Yeah. Yes. Can you try to share your screen? All right, awesome. Excellent. Hopefully, right. yeah, hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. Fabulous. Thank you, uh, Theo. Thank you for the introduction. Good, uh, good afternoon, traders. I hope you're uh, hope you're all well. Hope you are uh, enjoying this uh, um, uh, eventful week in a, an eventful month in an eventful uh, year. And uh, you know what a year it's been. And uh, along with that, okay, we want to look at ways and opportunities to to make the most of that. And uh, so here we are today in uh, session twenty eight of our price action trading guide, where we are going to talk about how to trade breakouts with price action. So, um, you know, we have touched on a little bit in the past, okay, in terms of the, you know, the difference between breakouts and pullbacks, and we will do a little recap on that. But today we're going to focus mostly on how to trade breakouts with uh, price action. Uh, it would be interesting to know of those of you joining us here today, um, how many of you use breakouts as one of your particular own trading methods, or how many of you are completely new to trading, still just trying to understand, you know, all of the terminology and all the different methods. Um, by all means, if you could just put that down in the chat box, you know, that'd be uh, that'd be great to uh, to know what your own experience um, of breakouts have been. <laughs> Today, here we are, Admirals, a Forex and CFD broker, okay, with uh, many financial instruments for you to engage with, providing global, global presence with local support, uh, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products, and giving the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 trading platforms. If you have any questions about uh, Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative, and they'll be very happy to help guide you. So what are we going to talk about here today? Well, not unsurprisingly, it's price action. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what price action is, because I do recognize that there are lots of people here joining us who, you know, just joining us, you know, into the series or are just starting out on their uh, trading journey. That's absolutely fine. And what you'll find is that um, the client here to, to help new traders understand price action and how to utilize it. Uh, but I also recognize that we have a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a broad range of experience of traders who join us from complete beginners to those of you who are joining us, um, you know, who've been trading for a while. You're all very welcome. Great to have you uh, here with us. Uh, I also recognize that we have a truly global audience who join us um, these days. So wherever you are in the world, uh, myself and here, all the uh, folk here at Admirals, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a good trading year and, uh, and enjoying these rather rare uh, eventful markets. So um, not unsurprising though, in terms of our agenda, we'll talk about difference between breakouts and uh, pullbacks. 
and uh, you know what do traders need to be aware of with breakouts and, and how to create a simple breakout price action trading plan we'll just we'll focus on kind of one particular element of breakouts there that you can um, take away and utilize in your own trading and that's what um, that's what we uh, want so uh, Shirish says, and I do apologize if I pronounce your name wrong there, I do apologize. So she has no experience with breakouts. That's absolutely fine. That's um, that's what these sessions are here for. So, so uh, I hope you get some useful. Uh, Mark says, uh, I would like to put the sound. Uh, it's not good. Okay. So um, I will try and uh, work on that. I'll try and improve the sound for you, Mark. Thanks for uh, making that, uh, making me aware of that. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll work our way through that, hopefully improve as we go on. And uh, as always, just uh, you know, just hopefully, just work with that. And uh, as I said, as always, you know, whenever we go through these sessions, if there's time at the end, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the live markets and start having a little look at um, what's been going on. We've had today, we've had CPI numbers out, etc. So there's always uh, uh, something to look at in terms of how the market has reacted to that news. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name's Paul. Traded for many years, okay, and uh, traded for funds for clients. Primarily, I tend to focus on trading FX uh, along with indices and commodities, and I tend to be a trend trader for uh, sort of position trades, swing trades, a reversal trader for shorter term intraday and scalping trades. Um, all of which are useful when you're talking about trading price action, breakouts, etc. Um, all of which is uh, pretty relevant. So, um, so, you know, if you're joining us for the first time, um, you know, this, this series was all about focusing on uh, price action, okay, uh, and how to uh, understand and utilize it in your own trading. And um, as the slide says, it's sometimes easy for new traders to be a little bit intimidated by the amount of knowledge, A, that is required to be able to analyze markets, but also what is out there, okay? The internet is a wonderful thing, but uh, when it comes to trading uh, sort of education and uh, knowledge, you know, there's an awful lot of a uh, uh, um, move and counter move sort of, you know, um, uh, information that you can get out there. And that can leave new traders to perhaps being a little bit intimidated or a little bit overwhelmed by what, um, what they're working with. Uh, and what we've always tried to do with our knowledge sessions here, our education sessions, in particular the price action, it is just give you a little bit of understanding and insight how price action works, how candlesticks are formed, uh, what they tell us, uh, and how it becomes easier to analyze and understand markets when you can uh, work with that. Well, thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. And um, uh, each Wednesday, we'll uh, upon each session to, to so show that hopefully you're educated and informed on how to use price action in your uh, in your own trading. If you are completely new to trading, price action trading is, is quite simply, it's just a very simple means of market analysis using the movement of price over time. It, it is popular with both retail and institutional traders, uh, and typically we will mostly focus on sort of daily charts over the last three to six months. But um, as I say every week, learning to understand price action is just a little bit like a, uh, it's like learning a new language, all right? And it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of practice. And once you do, well, then you're in a position to, you know, once it clicks for you, well, then, you know, it, it sort of forms a fantastic bedrock, okay, of, of trading knowledge to work with, from which you will develop your own particular trading styles and methods. But we will focus mostly on the daily charts, all right, over the last three to six months. The reason being that, that you know, I do recognize that, you know, whilst many people would like to trade full time, the, the reality is that most people joining us are, are trading around other commitments, okay, whether it be, you know, a, a day job or running a business or caring for parents or running families, etc. So, you know, you might only have a little bit of time every day to look at it. Uh, and so being able to sort of just focus on the daily chart mostly uh, and then but recognizing that all of the concepts and ideas and methods we share with you, you know, they really are applicable across all time frames and all instruments. And, and we'll cover it in also like in our sessions. There we go. Let's move the little risk warning down there a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I say this every week that I try to cover a little bit of the, uh, the, the sort of hard skills. Okay. So, Things like trade setup, so things like engulfing candles, star formations, pin bars, false breakouts, all kind of things that are the let's say that maybe the hard skills of trading, but also with an element of what are the soft skills, which new traders may not recognize their value, but I assure you, the longer you trade, the more important they become. So things like 
preparing yourself, okay, having a good routine, building um, checklists, all right, grading your trades, etc. All those kind of soft skills that, you know, at the start of your trading journey might not necessarily appear or seem that important. But I assure you that the, the longer you trade, the, the more important they will become. Okay. So what we say is, you know, have a very simple um, price action trading plan that we can follow, that new traders can start to learn so that, you know, as you build up your knowledge and experience and confidence um, with the uh, the sessions, okay, and with, with markets, you know, they will help you as a stepping stone towards developing into the best trader that you can be. What we talk about is, you know, whenever you open a chart, whatever that chart is, whether it be, you know, gold, Bitcoin, your dog, doesn't matter what it is. First thing you want to do is go to the monthly chart and start drawing in levels of support and resistance. Go down to the weekly chart, go down to the daily chart, draw those levels of support and resistance in. Okay, areas where we see prices uh, bounced off or it is, you know, it's had to, to make a decision. You know, and the good things about the, the MetaTrader platforms is that, you know, once you draw those levels in, that they will stay on the charts, right? You know, so the first time you have to do it might take a little bit of time, but once it's done, they will stay there. And then it just becomes a job of updating those as, you know, as the price action develops. What we want to be able to do then is step two is define if there is a trend. And I say this all the time, good trends will leap off the chart at you. Don't, there's no need to force it, to push it. The challenge we have is that markets probably only trend about 20 to 30% of the time. The rest of the time, they're either consolidating or transitioning, as we will look at in a couple of slides' time. What we're looking to do is, you know, to start out for traders trading price action, is if there is a trend, step three is that we're interested in see how does price react at those key support resistance levels. And those key support and resistance levels might well be the horizontal levels we do in step one. They might be big round numbers, so treble zero numbers, so gold at 2,000, which we'll look at in a moment. Or it might even be dynamic levels of support and resistance, all right, which is what we normally associate to uh, a moving average that's uh, on a chart. We did uh, a session a couple of weeks ago about moving averages. Uh, the good thing about all of this series is that it's all being recorded. It's all being uploaded to uh, the Admiral's YouTube channel. So be sure to, if you're not subscribed to that, make sure you do so that you're actually able to, to follow that uh, and actually sort of just reconnect with any of the previous sessions if you need to go over them. What we're looking for is, you know, at those particular key areas, those key particular levels, step four is what we're going to look for, are there any particular price action triggers at those levels and areas? So things like we've covered in the past, things like pin bars, engulfing candles, key reversal formations, star formations. We must also be aware of step five. Is it part of a bigger chart pattern? Is that maybe a, a flag pattern in an uptrend that is a continuation pattern? Maybe it's a triangle. Maybe it's head and shoulders or a double top or a double pop, which are reversal patterns and might be just giving us an indication that the trend is coming to an end. It's just, you know, it's uh, sometimes very simple for traders to get caught. You know, they can't see the, uh, the wood for the trees. So even if you're identifying good price action triggers and step three, just take a quick step back and look, you know, is it part of a bigger chart pattern at all? Okay, Matt. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, lower that tone down there. Hopefully, maybe that will uh, maybe that will make it a little bit uh, maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to uh, check on the uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that will uh, hopefully that will improve, Mark. Uh, but as I said, step five is it part of a bigger chart pattern? We also talked about you know what instruments we would look to focus on. And we focus on quite a few to begin with. So an awful lot of FX pairs. And we're going to do a session just specifically on FX pairs. So dollar index, and then all of the major FX pairs that you can read there. But also indices, commodities, equities, uh, and crypto. And we've done specific sessions on indices and commodities, all right? And uh, you can find them, as I said, on the uh, uh, on the Admiral's YouTube channel. But, you know, they all add up to a, a broad range of instruments that are available to you on the Admiral's platform that will allow you to, to basically, you know, engage with markets. What you will find, though, is probably is that, you know, what you'll find is you'll probably 
focus down onto around about half a dozen, okay, half a dozen or less instruments. But to begin with, you know, as you're doing your, uh, as you know, you're building your skill sets, as you are learning the language of price action, you know, it's, as I said, it'll take a little bit of time to draw in those levels of support and resistance on the charts to begin with. The meta trading platform remembers that. And so once you've done it the first time, then it becomes a case of just updating it. And it becomes, especially if you're looking at things like, you know, the daily and the weekly charts, it becomes very quick to sort of identify whether there is something there for you to take interest in or whether there's really nothing going on at all and you can you can move on. So let's talk a little bit of a reminder of the phases of the markets with regards to understanding how we could trade breakouts. So, um, you know, personally, I would see us as having, there's effectively um, five phases of the markets. And in the first part, the first easiest ones are, as you can see there, we have a, a downtrend where invariably price is making lower lows, lower highs. We have an uptrend where price is making, you know, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, and a period, you know, that is range bound where price is going sideways. And you know, lots of people who will happily, happily sort of trade inside of, you know, large ranges. Sometimes my people call it range bound, sideways, consolidating. So first and how you label it, uh, what is important is that you recognize that phase of the market, right? And you remember what I was saying is that good trends leap off the chart at you. The challenge you have is that markets do not trend as often as uh, we would like. The other sort of phases of the markets are where we are getting transitions, right? Uh, and invariably where, in this case, we're transitioning from, you know, a, a very clear downtrend into an uptrend. And, you know, that might be finishing with, you know, a, uh, a triangle pattern before it actually gets a little bit, a little bit scruffy before we get flag patterns before it actually transitions from that downtrend into an uptrend. Sometimes that can be very scruffy when those trends are ends. Alternatively, it might be transitioning from an uptrend to a downtrend. Price has been going up, puts in a quite a nice evening star formation there before it actually turns into sort of more of a version of a double top. In fact, actually, even a kind of a head and shoulders. But what we've seen is price transitioning from uptrend to downtrend. Very often, that can those that price action can be quite choppy. The ends of trends are not always pretty things. Sometimes they are very clear and very easy to trade. Other times, they you know they can be very scruffy. The price action can just not be terribly uh, clear. And for a new trader, just leave them. OK, just just leave it. Let that market do its things. Not until you've gained a bit of experience that you will recognize that, you know, that those markets in a transitioning and then you can just sit on the sidelines and wait to position yourself once a new trend is uh, a new trend starts to take off in its new direction. So, as I said, I would look at that as kind of those five phases, uptrend, range bound, downtrend, transitioning from downtrend to uptrend, transitioning from uptrend to downtrend. You know, and if as a new trader, if you can even just okay. and you can even just identify which phase that market is in, well, that gives you a good starting point, right? That gives you a very good starting point to understand, well, you know, what should I be doing here? Because as a trader, you're only really making one of three decisions, really. Okay. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit on my hands and do nothing? And sitting on your hands and doing nothing is actually what you might do more often than anything else. And that is absolutely fine. Remember, being flat is a position in the market. What we want to do is to basically you know, identify when the, the phases of the markets, okay, the price action is in alignment with you know, what, we're, uh, what we're looking to achieve in terms of trading you know, good trends. You know, when the market isn't like that, well, it's absolutely fine to sort of just leave that alone and then basically go and look, uh, you know, go and either look at a different market or do something different. OK, there's nothing that says you have to force a trade. And invariably for new traders, sometimes that's what they do. And actually, it's the worst thing they can possibly do. All right. Good trends leap off the chart at you. All right. They will leap off the chart at you. But the, the problem is, is that they don't trend as often as we would like. So you just need to just need to remember that. So we sort of go down a little bit level, a deeper level into understanding, you know, what are people looking at? You know, well, generally, there are sort of tend to be thousands of trading and investing methods. If you go onto the internet, you can find them and there'll be thousands of them. But realistically, what tends to happen is that it tends to boil down to one of two styles. You are trading either 
a break the line of support or resistance, or a bounce off a line of support or resistance. It's as simple as that. You will find there'll be lots of variations, thousands of different training styles, but when you boil them down, the majority of them are boiling down to that. And if you can understand that uh, you know, at its most simple level, well, that helps you as a trader just to try and sort of get to grasp with what is going on with the market, to understand what is it doing so that you're in a position to, to align yourself accordingly or to actually just step aside and avoid. So, you know, if you're trading a, a breakout, okay, well, normally we would say, you know, breakout, you're identifying there's, you know, a level of resistance or level of support. And invariably, it's invariably as the price breaks out of that, in this case here, that that is what we're considering as a breakout. And that, you know, that's a good charm, you know, 15 minute chart on dollar yen. But that price action could occur on, you know, a one hour time frame, a daily time frame, a weekly, even a monthly time frame, right? You know, it's identifying particular levels of support and resistance when my price breaks out of them. Okay, whether it breaks out to the north side, where it breaks resistance and goes up, or whether it breaks, you know, to the south side, okay, in, in terms of breaking levels of support and moves down. And that is something to be, uh, that's something to be very clear of and aware of. And we will, we're going to go into more of that in a moment's time. But alternatively, for the new traders, well, you might be trading a bounce off the level of support or resistance. So, you know, it's an old chart of the euro, uh, euro against the US dollar on the daily. And what you can see is, you know, remember what I was saying is that, you know, a good trend leaps off the chart at you, okay? It's very clear that price has been in a downtrend, but every time it pulls back, well, it bounces, okay? It's bouncing, bouncing off either, either, you know, static levels of support resistance or dynamic levels of support resistance from the 50 period moving average there okay you know and what we're looking to do is to sort of you know in that case bounce off the 50 period moving average price is bouncing off it as it carries on with that trend so as i said we're either trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off uh, a level of support or resistance and it is possible it can do both. I've all, I always like this chart because this is a KBN chart of a weekly chart where it covers over, over sort of almost like three to four years where price having been in a trend, well, then basically it just, it spends years going back and forth between the sort of 58 to 69 level. You can see that occasionally it bounces off it, right? Bounces off it consistently. Bounces off those levels for years, okay? Until it actually breaks out okay until it breaks out there and then bosh we're off into a new trend so as i said you know it doesn't matter if it's a 15 minute chart or even a weekly chart understanding okay drawing in those levels of support and resistance understanding them and recognizing you know as i said most trading methods break down to either a break of the line of support or resistance or a bounce off a level of support or resistance yes there'll be variations yes you can make that as complex as you wish all right or alternatively you can make it as simple as you wish also and with both of those kind of trading methods is they both have their pros and cons right uh, you'll always hear me say that you know there is no perfection in trading it's about which method resonates with yourself which is the method that you believe you could follow consistently trade after trade after trade, not just for one trade, but for samples of 25, 50, 100, 200 trades, et cetera. Some people prefer breakouts. Some people prefer bounces. And, you know, generally, I'm only admit that I prefer bounces as part of a pullback in a trend. That's my that's my general, okay? And if you were to look at my sort of longer-term trend, uh, trend trading, you'd find that's the majority of it. However, true breakouts can make for very good trading opportunities. And that's what we're going to look at. Okay, we'll have a little look at some simple breakout tactics. As I said, they both have their pros and cons. And um, I know traders who, you know, literally only trade breakouts on on longer term on longer term charts on daily, weekly, monthly charts. That's literally all they trade as part of their uh, own funds. Others traders like myself, okay, prefer to trade pullbacks. You know, that would be my general preference. If you were to go through my trading records, you'd see that. But as I said. You know, it is about which one resonates with you, which is the version that you believe that you could trade the most consistently that, you know, are, you know, that, okay? Thanks, Mark. So let's have a look about trading breakouts. My personal belief 
okay, is that when it comes to trading breakouts, you've got four options for your entry, which we'll look at in a chart in a moment or two's time. The first one is when it trades a breakout, you enter on an actual break of the support or resistance level you're looking to trade the breakout of. And number two, you enter when price closes the other side of the support or resistance level that you are stalking, for want of a better word. The third option is you can enter on a retest back of that support or resistance level. And the fourth one is you can enter on an inside bar price action candlestick post breakout. So I believe that those are kind of the four options that you that you have. And once again, they all have their particular pros and uh, cons. So let's have a bring up a chart, okay? Because I appreciate visual always makes it a little easier, doesn't it? So this is a chart of gold. It's a it's a thirty minute chart here, and I'm hoping that you know you can see that you know having a price sort of ran up there, okay, yesterday, price was just really you know we were just effectively identified this level of resistance here, okay, as we come into the end of yesterday's session. This is where you can see that you know. I have uh, fractals on there, okay? You can see, hopefully see the fractal indicator there. Remember, there was a whole session we did on fractals there that can actually help new traders just identify, okay, particular levels of support or resistance. And in this case, what we saw was, you know, gold broke through here, okay? Gold broke through it. And as I was just saying there, you know, you've got normally four options. One of them is, okay, option one is that you trade or you, you have an order or you, you know, uh, enter a market when price breaks the level, when price breaks out of that level, okay? That's one of the, the ways that you can look at, you can look at trading that. Uh, and invariably, you know, what you'd be looking to do is as always is have your stop loss, okay? Beneath the sort of kind of the low of the recent price action. As I said, you know, that one, you can trade the break of the level. That tends to be the most aggressive. And remember that comes into a bigger conversation about risk to reward and where you sit on that. Option two is here is that actually, you know, what you do is you enter once you have had a close, okay, once price is closed on the other side of the level. Now, once again, it's that kind of risk to reward um, um, spectrum in that invariably what you're doing is, you know, here when you get into a point one, well, then invariably you are taking on the most risk, but you have the option for the most reward. When you wait for price to close, okay, when you wait for price to close, okay, on the other side of it, well, then invariably you are taking less risk because you're waiting to see if there is a close. But alternatively, you know, your reward will be less because invariably the difference between your entry price and your exit price is likely to be is likely to be higher, which means that your risk to reward is probably going to be lower. So the option is to uh, wait for a return to test the level. Now, this was quite a long wait for a return to test the level here, okay? Price actually, price went up and came back down to the area, but then it retested before price rocketed off. Preferably, preferably, okay, preferably, you know, I would normally like price, if it's going to come back and retest, to retest within, you know, within just a few candles after the, uh, after the breakout. But, you know, what you want and what you get from the market can be very different. And there's a case of this, you know, I've just taken this from today. And today's price action I wanted to be as, you know, as, uh, as up to date and as accurate as, uh, as possibly. But, you know, those are kind of three of the ways, all right, that you can trade a breakout. Well, try to break the level where you've got a very clearly defined level of score resistance. Wait for price to close the other side of the level and then look to, to enter the trade. Or third, wait for price to come back to, to return and test the level. Uh, and this is, you know, none of them, none of them are perfect. Remember, I'm saying it's about which is the one suits your your risk profile, your particular trading style. Some people might wait to basically be very happy to just trade the exact breakout because they know they're happy to get in. Uh, just unsuitable okay just the test level in which case this case it took a long time but once again it could be that basically price breaks out and it's so strong it doesn't come back to retest it just carries on and that can happen as well so as i said there's no there's no perfection 
all right? There's no perfection while I'm doing is offering you the, the, you know, the different options and you can see well, which one would suit you, which one would resonate with you in terms of your own particular trading style, which is the only one that you think that you can trade consistently time after time for a sample of trades of 20, 50, 100, et cetera. Uh, another alternative from today, and this is, a, this is actually Bitcoin on the, the daily chart. Uh, and what we actually had here is, you know, there's kind of two here, okay? This is, A, you've got the big round level of 30,000. Remember what I was saying right at the start of the little, of the routine, okay? Drawing, drawing in level support resistance, but also big round numbers, okay? Triple zero numbers. Bitcoin had actually, Bitcoin, and you can see it actually, you know, that for those people who had been maybe a bit aggressive, would have probably recognized that as price going sideways there, right? Remember. Option one is always the break, okay, of the high. So maybe some people might have traded that break out of this resistance level. Others may have just had an order in, you know, just above 30,000 there to, to basically to, to trade the break there with your stops probably down beneath the recent price action. The alternative is, remember, is point two, is the close the other side of the level. So in this particular case, we were fortunate that price has basically closed just above the 30,000. So yesterday, if you'd have been looking at that, you know, you said, well, you know, once I get a close the other side, okay, of that 30,000 resistance level, that's my entry point, okay? Well, the return to the level, we can see actually, probably see if we'll look at it in the live chart in a bit, price has actually basically has retraced back to the uh, 30,000 level today. This is what, as I said, you know, preferably if we break through, I'd like it to come back and retest it soon enough. And the whip from there, and we'll look at the, we'll look at the live market in a moment. Uh, and those of you who are maybe a little shopper at the moment, okay, at the moment, that's, you know, is a, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an inside bar, it's a little bullish doji there, okay, uh, at the moment, but invariably we've still got quite a few hours of today's trading session to go through. That could change considerably, especially after the uh, after the CPI uh, numbers that we saw earlier. But what I want to show is just, you know, it doesn't matter about the instrument, it doesn't really matter about the, the time frame. What we see is, you know, price breaking out of particular levels. So, like, you know, you're drawing those levels in, or recognizing where those big round numbers are. You know, when price is getting towards them, that's when it becomes interesting for for traders, and and it depends upon how you particularly uh, look to 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 view and work with that. So, as I said, there's generally four options. I believe enter on an actual break of the support resistance level, enter on a close. Okay, the other side of the resistance level or the support level that you're looking to trade. Enter on a retest. Okay, once price comes back to retest that support level, it comes back to kiss the level before it moves on. Or alternatively, enter on an inside bar price action candlestick post breakout. And that's what we're going to look at here because it's uh, it's simple, it's uh, mechanical, and it uh, involves price action, which is what we're here talking about today. So let's have a little look at that. If you haven't watched uh, the uh, the session we did on inside bars, well, just a quick reminder is that you know, an inside bar, as the name gives away, really, it's formed when the high and the low of the bar is fully within the range of the preceding bar, okay, the bar before it. It has to be completely within it. Sometimes you'll hear traders call it a mother bar, okay, or the kangaroo bar. Once again, I, I, I don't really care too much how you label it. What it is is about is you know that you recognize the actual setup itself. Uh, and with inside bars, I always talk to traders about think of it like an organism breathing. Market surges, it rests, and then it surges again. And that's a bit like humans. You know, as humans, we you know, get up in the morning, we surge during the day, we rest at night, and then we get to surge the next day. And that's like markets, okay? Markets might have a surge. The inside bar is the sort of is the rest, it's the compression before we look to surge again. And if you can recognize the inside bar, well, that sometimes that is the rest before the next surge. And we're hopefully looking to utilize that as a as a trigger, as a price action trigger to give us the opportunity to, to sort of you know join what might be a new particular trend. As it says there, we're looking to catch the next surge. So some examples of inside bars as I said, remember. You know, it has to be, the high and the low has to be within, okay, the range of the preceding bar. That's why this one is not an inside bar because actually, all right, the high of it was higher than the, the previous bars. Um, I, some people, some people like to just basically do their work 
off the actual bodies of candlesticks grows. For me, that's not the case, okay? You know, there's four elements of data that make up a candlestick, the open, the high, the low, and the close. They are all important. They're all The relationship between each of them is, is crucial to understand as a trader. And so this, this is not an inside bar. Yep, the body, okay, the body might be inside, but it's not, you know, the, it, it's high was higher than the preceding candle. Over. That is not an inside bar, okay? That, by my definition, that is not an inside, uh, that's not an inside bar, whereas these three are. So, how do we use it in terms of trading breakouts? We're well, kind of simple, really, in that what we can do is we wait for a breakout to occur. So, you know, for a breakout to occur, we've got to be drawing in our levels of support resistance and identifying areas where the market is you know, butting up against, almost like, you know, almost like a, you can tell I'm a farmer, almost like a bull leaning against a, uh, leaning against a fence, okay? And that can be in like an identification of support or resistance in the market where sometimes you will see price leaning against that fence before it breaks and goes through. And what we can do, okay, is wait for the breakout to occur. And we, we saw that breakout here, okay? And then in this particular case, the next candle is an inside bar, all right? And what we're looking to do then is to trade in the direction of the breakout. Now, if we look at here on this, okay, on that just particular example there, well, remember we're saying point one would have been somebody trading just as it broke through it, okay? Okay, so that would have been maybe a, a you know a one type one type of breakout. Type two trader trader would have basically be, broken out, would have you know gone short there where it closed the other side of this support level. A three type three type trader would have probably come back as price came back to retest the level it broke out. Okay, and to be short there, and then a type four which is effectively waiting for an inside bar just after breakout as our means to to enter. So as I said. You know, lots of people just look at a breakout, but when you break it down, all right, there are different ways to enter, lots of different ways to enter. And, and you know, uh, you know if, if you choose that trading breakouts is your route, you know, you can look to focus on one of those particular styles. We're going to say, just as I said, focus on just inside bar breakouts. But all the other three options are equally valid. You know, as I said, no perfection. It's about which one could I trade? consistently for 20 50 100 trades that's actually more that's actually more important to you in terms of you know um, building your own data all right building your own you know a data that you need to see how you trade that particular setup you know and actually how you can improve it and where where and when it works best for yourself and so there are versions of that okay this was a euro yen on the daily chart this was in a very you know very simple downtrend okay you know when we're talking about okay looking for patterns now actually price pulled back to the 20 period moving average it actually put an inside bar in there which in itself is you know is a kind of a is a pullback trade but what we had was as price broke out of that flag pattern well what happened okay we broke out of the flag pattern here but then the next two candles again the next two daily candles were inside bars themselves they were inside bars right and you know what you'd be looking for is effectively to you know trade the break of the inside bar with your stops above the highs in the direction of the breakout you know and that's where we can move you know for what that moves for like four or five days as a swing trade that's a very nice trade okay very nice trade the opportunity to sort of achieve you know a two to one reward to risk ratio that's what we like to see you know and it's just very simple like that okay it's very uh, almost as I said you know quite mechanical you know you're just looking for a breakout of a level followed by an inside bar and then looking to trade in the direction of the breakout keep it nice and simple nice and uh, e you know easy for a uh, for, for a new trader to understand more with um you know, this was what's this you know this is the day, uh, start of the day right on the dax so okay on an intraday basis the price is just basically forms it forms a range to start off we can see level of resistance level of support and as i said you know a period of consolidation right so we go from consolidation to expansion right sometimes to retrace and then to expansion again and that's what we had here you know consolidation which is all this okay building a range Expansion, which is basically the breakout, then followed by an inside bar there, small inside bar, looking to trade, you know, the break of the low, right? We're looking to trade in the direction of the trend, the stops, okay, above the uh, above the highs, and price then basically falls away, doesn't it? All right. So when we get good, true breakouts, good, clear breakouts, 
you know, you know, the uh, you know, breakouts can be very, very good patterns to, to trade. Okay, very good um, style of trading. It'll suit some traders very, very well indeed. You know, if you have the right kind of trading methodology. You know, as I said, some people who are very risk accepting, some people who are very aggressive. You know, will trade. You know, as I said, would just clear this up a little bit. You know, would look to just basically get in short as soon as price traded through that level. They'll be looking to be sure, you know, with a stop loss above the, the recent high. Others will wait for price to close. Okay. Others might wait for it to retest. Others might wait for an inside bar to form. Okay. Just after the breakout. You know, as I said, if we're going to trade an inside bar breakout, okay, you know, confirmation, well, then I like to see it happen within a couple of candles. We looked at that gold example a few slides back, and that was actually a big. You know, it took a while for it to return, but it's valid. It came back and retested that level before it took off um, again. But preferably, preferably, you know, within the couple of bars that are actually it is once it's broken out is would be the preference in terms of the way to uh, to 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 trade that. But as I say, you know, what you want and what you get from markets is you know can be different. But if you have a, an underlying principle, okay, an underlying simple trade plan that you can work with, well then you're that can help you, you know, identify good opportunities and stay away from the uh, stay away from the sort of the, the the challenging ones, so to speak. Okay, and this is examples here on, on gold. This is the weekly chart here, okay. And uh, hopefully you can see that you know for what was that for about four or five months, in fact, four or five months price had actually just gone sideways. Remember, you know, price has just gone sideways. Looking at the phases of the market, so right in that phase, that market was sideways until what happened well here on this weekly candle we broke out okay we broke out and then what happened is you know we had not one but two inside bars okay two inside bars there okay uh underneath just underneath the breakout okay before the breakout sort of took its way off and and, and fired its way and so you know as i said you know there's four different ways to, to enter but you get a breakout and you get a small inside bar. Okay. And the market has, there's, you know, we've got, we've had, you know, consolidation, we're getting expansion, right? So we need surge. This is the rest. Okay. Before we get the next surge. And if you, you know, even if you just recognize that and see that surge, rest, surge, being able to recognize that and work with that, you know, that can help you just identify, okay, what phase that trade, you know, that market is in. As I said, right at the start, if you can identify the phase the market's in, that puts you in a good position to decide, well, you know, I'm looking to align myself onto the bearish side here. So, you know, I'm looking for, you know, particular bearish setups that suit me. I can recognize prices just broken out there, get a couple of inside bars on the to the short side, and away we and away we go. Okay. So, you know, uh, how do you look to enter? Well. Uh, you know, to begin with, with you know, kind of what we call like maybe the safe standard entry is that you know you would enter on the break of the higher the low of that candle, somewhere between two to ten pips, depending upon the direction, the time scale, and the spread. So of course, if you know you're on a weekly, if you're trading like a weekly inside bar, well then you know you might be having like a you know a ten pips. If you're trading a five minute breakout, well then it might just be two pips, okay, that you're waiting in terms of the. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the 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 breakout, in terms of stop loss, we never trade without a stop loss, and we place that at the other side of the candle. But what I also caveat that is, you know, just take a look at what the pro, what the, the chart is actually telling you. Don't you know the old trader saying of "Don't be a dick for a tick." Okay, you know, if the price action needs you to have the stop loss a little bit further away because of the the price action, that's absolutely that's absolutely fine. As always, we're looking for a two to one reward to risk ratio. Right? That's what we're in. That's what we're looking for. I appreciate some traders like to try and run their trades, and that's absolutely fine. But as a general rule, for a starting point, if we make it simple and mechanical for a new trader, two to one reward to risk. And you know, it's that is a safe point. You know, it requires a good move. But as I said, when you get true breakouts, well, actually, you know, you do get good moves. And if you've got a two to one reward to risk, well, then invariably anything above or about 34, 35% hit rate, well, then effectively, you know, you are, you know, you are break even. And anything above that will then start to put you into positive expectancy. So just a couple of final notes, you know, as I said, no trading method is 100% accurate. We would all love one to be, but the reality is it is not. Hence why it's always important that you use a stop loss, uh, and it's also important that you do risk management and your position size accordingly. If you're not really sure about risk management, go and look on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel. You'll find us the uh, session on that. 
With inside bars, you just need to be aware of the possibility of a false breakout, all right? And once again, we've done a session on false breakouts in this price action guide. So go and find that video and look at it there. And that's why, you know, ideally we like to trade it, you know, as, as part of a end of a pullback in a trend. If you're a pullback trader like me, or after a very clear breakout, okay, you know, inside bar, clear breakout, you know, from an area, that's what we're looking for. And that's what helps minimize false breakouts for yourself. So a few final points, all right, is that, yeah, inside bar, very simple technical setup, can be used across all time frames and instruments. It can be used for reversals and continuations, but it is very effective to trade when you see it after a good, clear breakout. But just remember to be clear of, you know, or, or uh, be careful for false breakouts. So before we have a quick look at the live charts, just remember in conclusion, price action analysis is a very simple way of analyzing uh, markets. We're looking for price action triggers at significant price levels, prices, or zones, allow us to build a very simple price action trading plan. There are generally four types of trading breakouts. Enter on the actual break of the support resistance level. Enter on a close, the other side of support resistance level. Enter on a retest of the support resistance level after the breakout or enter on an inside bar, price action, candlestick, post breakout. Uh, the last one is a simple, mechanical, unambiguous way for price action traders to trade breakouts. And that can be a good starting point for a new trader. And then as they develop in confidence and a skill, well, then you can do that. We might have a minute or two just for uh, the live markets, but before that, don't forget to join us next Wednesday, 19th of April. Um, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about trading trends with price action. Okay. How do we make, how do you know, what's the difference between trends and range bound markets? We just looked at phases there. How do we identify the best trading opportunities and how do we trade that just using simple price action trading plans? So that's Wednesday, 19th of April, two o'clock London time. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the, uh, to the website and sign up. As always, you can contact us there. You can email there. Okay, you can see the uh, our email address there. And as I said, just be sure to, if you don't already, subscribe and follow us on YouTube where you can actually see the rest of this uh, series so far that you can sort of go in and check up on. Okay, well, if we've got a minute or two, just quickly, what we'll do is we'll just uh, bear with me for a moment. What we'll do is we'll just try and switch across to the uh, Admiral's uh, MetaTrader platform and we will take it from there. So just bear with me one second, ladies and gentlemen, we'll do that. Do, do, do. Let's bring that up there. Um, we've got this. Ah, I'm not studied. Do, do, do. Okay, so um, I just have a price action here. I was looking at it here uh, earlier. Um, the Dow Jones here. Okay, so just uh, just to be aware of, you know, it, it has it had been in a very clear downtrend. Okay, uh, and then very big price formed. A kind of cup and handle formation, which is another price action. But what we're interested in here is, you know, this is a version, okay, not not my preference, but uh, this candle here, that was the high of the last month, the high of the March, okay. And we talked about trading on daily charts and how price reacts when it breaks it. And actually, what we can see here, you know, that is kind of like a point one and a point two there, okay, breakout there, right? Price broke through the high of the previous. Uh, the previous month, okay, it also closed above it, you know, when you'd be trading that with your stock beneath the low. Uh, and then actually what we see is that price does, you know, put in a couple, once again, a couple of inside bars, all right, which were also sort of indecision doji candles, but they're inside bars before price breaks out and starts to move up. Now, um, the reason why I talk about it is, is actually that I, I normally would prefer the inside bars to be above the breakout, above the breakout range, okay, above the breakout level, okay, that's what my preference would be. But sometimes, as I said, you know, what you want and what you get can be very, uh, can be very different. You know, and the important thing is, is recognize, you know, that was a breakout of the previous month's high. I mean, we talked to things last week about, you know, on trading on daily charts, that can actually be an interesting level, looking at the highs and lows of the previous month and how price reacts to it. And you can see price, you know, just went sideways for a little bit, consolidated, and then we've basically run up and, you know, we've carried on that up today. We'll see how that, um, we'll see how that plays out to, uh, for the rest of this particular, uh, this particular week um let's have a look at uh, i think we had a look at bitcoin in our session yeah you know you see at the moment interestingly you know as the price action we can look at their price section there you know having broken their four hours just basically going sideways a little bit let's just look at that let's just zoom out here okay um 
but you know having broken out of that 30,000 level you know price is just price is going sideways okay price is going sideways it's pushing up there at the moment perhaps maybe we get a little dip before uh, before any move up but you know you would be looking to to wait to see how does this how does this candle close today does it close you know as an inside bar just above the uh, above the breakout level that is something that you'd be looking at okay so you might just want you might just want to keep a, a, an eye on that gold well gold is really you know gold is uh, gold is gold all right gold is good as gold uh, and uh, you know i'm just looking to see if there was uh, not really no you know what we're looking at in terms of gold is prices up at 2000 remember what it's saying is you know you know not only is it important to draw in significant levels but also big round numbers, you know, and price on gold has been around there, around that, you know, 2000 for the last couple of weeks, you know, actually the way it's maneuvering, all right? And what we have seen is that, you know, this is one of the elements of, you know, it's breaking through, but actually not really printing any inside bars yet on the daily chart. That's, that's not, a, that's not an inside bar. Okay. Remember what I was saying is that the high is just a little bit higher than the preceding candle. Okay. That's not, it's not what we're after. Okay. You know, we wait, have it, Keep it mechanical. Keep it simple and mechanical in terms of understanding as a uh, as a trading of your uh, of your own uh, particular way. Um, and I think you know most of them are actually just uh, most of them. It looks like they are working out from their uh, from their uh, uh, the post CPI numbers there. Okay, so not really uh, not 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 big numbers there. Okay, in terms of you now looking at that uh, there at the moment. So. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like um, unfortunately looks like it's kind of uh, running out of uh, time as always. You know, as they say, time flies when you're having fun, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, I, I, yeah, I hope you found that session useful. I hope that's just given you a little bit of insight into a price action, b the different types of breakouts that you can trade, but also you know focusing just even on more, just using inside bars, okay, as you know as a as a price action trigger because it is simple, it's mechanical, and it is unambiguous all right in terms of you know if there isn't an inside bar there post breakout well there's there's nothing for you to trade so for new traders who can sometimes get a little bit uh, analysis paralysis get a little bit overwhelmed you can just make have a very simple trade plan there all right just you know, make identify the level break out of the level you know find a an inside bar and then look to trade in the direction of the breakout and that can make it quite simple quite mechanical and i think for new traders that can be very beneficial for you so, um, as always, I wish you the best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a fabulous trading week, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next week, okay? As I said, where we're going to focus on trading trends, utilizing price action. Until then, trade well, everybody. Cheers.